this is the, I'm not expecting anyone to, or maybe someone has, but I'm not expecting you to have completed this in one week. This is like ongoing work. Uh, but the first part of it was just making a list of all your open cycles, you know, everything from little things, from emails not answered, uh, to maybe paying back debts, uh, to at the deeper level, maybe having a, you know, a conversation that uh, you've, you've, you know you need to have with someone, uh, putting that off. So making a list of all those open cycles and then selecting the easy ones first. So, so say that's the top third, going through those. And that might be just answering emails or whatever, uh, going through a to-do list. And then just working through them one by one according to the level of difficulty. So the next ones might require, you know, contacting a client, for instance, or someone um, and, uh, you know, uh, closing some kind of, uh, deal or, you know, for instance, I got back to someone who had done some work for me and I realized it was two months and we'd never, I'd never actually got back to her to say whether I wanted to go ahead with it or not. So that wasn't as easy as just answering a standard email, but it, so it fell into this category, the next level. And then the final third is where we're looking at, you know, the things that we've really put off because they're so difficult. And instead of just kind of sweeping them under our, our mental rug, to bring them to the surface, at least to acknowledge them. And then ideally um, put those ones at the top of the list because anything that fills you with dark energy is gonna make every aspect of your day that little much harder. So if you can solve those big ones first, it makes sense. You know, maybe it's just, you know, really uh, um, uh, just talking to Amanda Jane uh, before, you know, talking about career moves, you know, whether to go into fashion or focus on her program you know, these kind of fall into big decisions, you know, and Cheryl was talking about, you know, working out where to live. Uh, if we bring these ones to the surface and really address those, everything else we will find becomes that much easier. So I'm just going to go around the room and just check in with everyone and see how you went addressing this. So we'll do it in the order of, um, I think the order that you came into the room. Uh, Amanda Jane, we'll start with you. Uh, how did you go with the, uh, implementing the law of open cycles? Yeah, it was very good for me. Hi, everybody. So I had to make a payment to Michelle, a girl that really helped me when at the end of Thailand, you know, with um, the ticket. Got the guy to, you know, taking a lot of my time and free coaching. I, I put a boundary and said no. I had to chase up some emails the web guy. I said no to a Tony Robbins Life Master yesterday. I was meant to start that and do it all night till in the day on American time, reach out to clients, talk about future work and make a decision which direction I'm going in and you're not sweep things under the under the um, carpet because it really stresses me out, it gives me anxiety and I procrastinate. So yeah, thank you. So that's what I did and just some logos. And now I'm I'm gonna sit in some deep meditation and, and really do a pros and cons of moving forward i will do the coaching my two free friday sessions but whether i go all in for my fashion or i um you know go all in and, and do this um 97 for a 12 week mastermind and um promote that excellent so you you really did uh, go all in and and, and, it, and yeah. yeah so amanda jane how how did you feel after you you started to really get into those things and close some of those cycles how did that make you feel so much more freedom i didn't realize how blocked i was and in my mind and then i could just be more in my heart just a lot more freedom in the mind because i was just overthinking getting overwhelmed and yeah just uh, yeah and, and Bit of procrastination, just yeah, such freedom to move yeah. forward in the room. Going, if I don't do the coaching, that doesn't mean I'm not a good, you know, just what I do. I just need to know how am I, why do people want to employ me rather than anyone else, and how do I stand there? Yeah, and that is what I'm focusing on today. Okay, excellent. All right, well, I think that deserves a round of applause. Are you ready? You ready, Amanda Jane? You're, that bandwidth is getting a little bit dodgy, by the way. Um, she's still there? Yeah. You're still there? All right. 
There you go. Okay, we're just going to send you some energy to Bali. Are you ready? Okay. All right, everyone on the count of three. One, two, three. Lots of energy to Amanda Jane for uh, paying back debts, saying no to clients who are expecting freebies and uh, addressing uh, where you need to be putting your energy going forward. So well done you and all the other things that you've been uh, crossing off your list too and not taking up that life mastery. Well done. All right, I hope that made its way over to you. Um, thank you for that. Cheryl, we'll go to you. Uh, share with us, uh, how did you find this? Did you put any of this into practice, the law of open cycles? Uh, it definitely made my list. Um, and I, I didn't make it till Saturday morning, but I did sit with coffee on Saturday morning and start to pull together a list. And then as things came up the rest of the week, I added them to the list. My list is not huge. I was surprised. Um, it's things I knew, but there's some big things on there. Um, one of them is where to live, and one of them is um, really what is my calling and what am I going to do about it. Um, and um, there were some outstanding, um, um, not serious conversations to have with people, but just that I wanted them to know that I was thinking of them and I just hadn't reached out to them. So I closed that loop with that, that group of people that were on the list. Um, and hopefully now it's you know just easier to have that continued conversation it's difficult to catch up with everybody when you've been away and you come back to Canada and everybody you know and I've lived in so many different places and so many different groups and so it's it's um my, my mornings are sacred for me so I don't use them for those kinds of things so I use them for full moon ceremony with people like Ayu <laughs> which we did today it was lovely yeah but um yeah so, so it was good I have some more work to do this weekend I got caught up with a few other things last weekend so I didn't do a couple of things that I wanted to and, and one of those was deal with those photographs and get them off to those I was, divers I was so going to ask that's you. on my diary for Saturday yeah yeah that's right yeah, yeah. They're, they're they're almost symbolic those ones aren't they um, yeah yeah and, and how did you feel at least addressing some of those issues and, and bringing everything to the surface? How, how did that work for you? Well, I mean, it's, it's nice to take things off the list, but I think there's really something percolating about, um, you know, what it is and where I'm supposed to be living and what I'm supposed to be doing. I, I had some really moving, um, um, just kind of longing emotions this mm -hmm. morning when we were doing some stuff and so um, I, yeah, I'm going to to do some own personal diet again over the weekend, maybe tomorrow night, and um, really try to dig in and figure it out. I, I mean, certainly my calling is nature, but yeah. and it doesn't seem like I the vision is not photography. So mm -hmm. I kept I kept it, it doesn't seem to be, and I don't know why. But something, something will come. It's meant to be, and you know, I'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. And you've brought it to the surface now, so it's there as yeah. an intention. And you know, yeah. uh, I use a great spiritual guide, isn't she? Because uh, she sure yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll share that with the group. IU is a great spiritual guide <laughs> if anyone wants to go deeper, uh, and you can do this work online. Uh, and sometimes, you know, just. Uh, asking questions of you know uh the universe asking for the answer seeking guidance yeah that's uh it's great that you've you've uh, identified that as the big thing cheryl yeah. yeah yeah and you're questioning it that's good rather than just blindly charging ahead yeah thank you for that uh are you ready for some warming energy in winnie sure am. Chilly yeah winnie give me some yeah. warmth <laughs> All right, here goes on the count of three, everyone. One, two, three, and lots of warming energy for you and clarifying energy, really helping you connect deep with your that, that intuitive self that's within you uh, to find the answers and knowing that sometimes the answers don't come until we take action and change our path. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, well, Lan, over to you. Uh, did, how did you go with the law of open cycles? Did you uh, put together your list? I did. I have a small list um, 
as you know, my husband is not well and he's been in crisis for the last four days. So that pretty much stopped everything. Um, but what I really noticed about the open cycles was besides writing the list, you know, and I know that's a stressful thing, which which helps to put it all down. But I was really seeing it on a personal level in my relationships with people. Um, So, you know, I was looking, there's a person that pushes my buttons, you know. So I was really looking at that and closing some of those cycles. And then I realized that my buttons weren't being pushed so much anymore. And that was really, really interesting. And it's actually made me look at that person a lot more um, as somebody that's actually really in some ways a teacher for me because I'm learning from that and watching my emotions um, come up and seeing where they come from and then making a choice. So, and then to close that cycle because I don't need it anymore. So. Yeah, I I think that's probably the biggest takeaway that I've had apart from now that come early next week, we should have some more uh, information on my husband and his problems um, moving forward, which is good. Um, Then I'll be able to kind of refocus because when it comes down to that, it becomes all encompassing and everything else just has to stop. So yeah. it is what it is, but that's a cycle in itself too. Yeah. So then I've seen that as well. So, you know, it's okay. It's a cycle. So I don't dump on myself and, and get frustrated. Why haven't I done this? And I haven't done that because it's the cycles going around and I'm in this one and I need to stay there and focus. And it keeps me more focused and more present leading up to today, which is great. So yeah. That's me. <laughs> Thanks. Thank, thank you for that. And with the, just a question on the ones that you were talking about, you know, with friendships that trigger you, were you able to complete that just through contemplation, just by um, mulling over it? You didn't actually have to talk to that person. It was just something internal. Yeah. It was definitely internal. Um, mm. I had actually been um, talking with that person in the previous weeks, you know, pushing my own buttons when when she's like this and so I started talking to her anyway, just to mm. try and help clear that so that I wasn't reacting, so that she got a chance not to react also because she's a, this person's a particularly reactive person. Um, so it's actually really helped um, create space for, actually, for us to actually have a real uh, relationship, a nice relationship as opposed wow. to one that's, you know, Passive aggressive it meets passive aggressive. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. So yeah, so then uh, since then and since last week, I've just seen it even clearer, and so I haven't actually had to do anything about it other than go, <sighs> okay, that's that again. And yeah. so because of that, it's allowed me to have uh, recognized more abundance in myself yeah. and more clarity. So yeah, really good. That's Thank crazy. you. No, that's inspiring. Uh, thank you, Wulan. All right, so are uh, you ready for some loving energy? Oh, yeah, yeah. bring it on. <laughs> yeah, all right. Because <laughs> I know you've got the other big open cycles, the husband's health and also home and all of that. So they're big ones. Like they Cheryl. are. Okay, yes. so on the count of three, everyone, one, two, three, and lots of uh, healing energy sending, sending to you, scooping it up, coming from thank all you. corners. <laughs> I can feel the energy over here, you know, it's amazing. There we go. (laughs) Much faster than Australia Post. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you. Okay. Uh, Are you? Oh, no, actually, Naomi's next. Naomi, over to you. Were you able to apply any of the uh, law of the open cycles to to your week that was? I actually did. I did a couple of big ones. I applied for a protection order on Monday. So um, I've been wanting to do it and putting it off for so long, but I just decided that, you know, after the session last week and um, yeah, with some support from a lot of friends and professionals, I finally did it. So that was quite scary. (laughs) And um, I also started studying again because I felt like I needed something to fill my day. 
and I pulled out of um, one of the subjects because I just felt like I I was trying to do put on too much again. So I'm starting to like as I said with that little mem that I sent through. I'm starting to pull back and do less instead of trying to pile more on my plate. Yeah, that's mm. excellent. And and how. Um, what impact has that had on you, Naomi, in terms of how you feel emotionally? Um, I actually, quite strangely, I felt really sorry for him because a lot of um, the information that I'd put in that protection order was very um, raw for him um, and it would probably hit a lot of, like for me, if I was reading that, I it would be hard for me. So I did feel... For him in that respect but I feel so much freer I feel I don't feel like I'm living in fear anymore um he can't take even you know the abuse economically he can't take that away from me so um it's really nice and it's um it's good for Bella as well because that just protects her from you know any anger and abuse and anything that's you know, pushed at her. So it's very empowering. Mm. As a woman, um, it's quite scary. But after, yeah. you know, a couple of days, I felt quite empowered. Yeah, that's excellent. Has that feeling of I, I understand what you're saying about feeling sorry for him? Has that created another open cycle? Do you feel? Um, not really. Um, yeah, I, I don't feel like yeah, I don't feel like I owe him anything or need to justify anything. So, so not really, no. Yeah, okay, just checking. Um, yeah, and if, you, and if you ever did, or this is for everyone, you know, sometimes I'm just taking the cue from Wulan, actually. It's not like you would actually have to talk to him, but it could be just writing a letter, not sending it, but just writing a letter just to, or, or whatever, you know, uh, how Wulan was saying, just... Uh, thinking it through. Uh, so the, the lesson here is not to sweep things under the rug. Um, and yeah. yeah. If you sense there's any emotion there that might be uh, unresolved, you know, that it's good to deal with that at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And I felt like um, I felt writing it down on paper um, was really therapeutic because it helped me understand, you know, not only what I'd been dealing with, but also um, help me understand, you know, that relationship and how toxic it really was. Mm. And, um, yeah, so it was very therapeutic, yeah. I Seeing must say. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Not feeling so guilty about it. Um, no. <laughs> that's excellent, Naomi. All right. Uh, can we send you some energy? Are you ready to receive? All yeah. right. Okay. On the count of three, everyone. One, two, three. Lots of empowering energy to you. Uh, you've already opened up the channels for it and it's, there's more coming your way. Well done for taking that action. Yeah. You're looking better already. You're looking more yeah. energized. <laughs> Whew. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Um, are you over to you. Uh, how have you gone with the law of open cycles? Good morning, everyone. Can you get it? Well, we might need a bit more volume from you oh, if you okay. can. Check my second. That is working. My first one. Whoop. That's better. Yeah. Good. Uh, I love putting in all the awareness of the open cycles this week, and it has brought a lot of feeling of uh, my day is much cleaner now because every time I'm going to open a new cycle, it's like, okay, how much of a ball am I, am I going to create? Big ball. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, how do I know when the cycle is closed? How do I check that in my body? And before I realized how much I was um, so attached to a strategy of what my mind knows of, oh, something happened. Someone came back <laughs> an ex two years ago. It's like, I can't stop thinking about you. Every day I want to call you and I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to do this. Um, I, I don't want to leave things to chance. I want to come back with you. And before I would like feel like so sorry, so guilty. And I want to do something about it. And 
knowing what has been closed, what's, yeah, how do I know the cycle is closed? How do I check that in my, how do I connect with that? And it has given me a lot of peace and calm, knowing that I have still a lot of loops and a lot of projects that I needed to, um, I want to be completed, but knowing in a day, then what do I really long to do? And what can I close today? It's just enough today. And I know that this cycle, it's like, I polish that and I, I, I love it. I kiss it. I hug it. I'll come back to you tomorrow. And they're happy mm -hmm. that way as well. They're happy in, in, in my basket. And I'm okay because I'm just human and I have 24 hours. And constantly then my practice coming back to now. What do, what do I really need now? I can just work more and talk to more people. But what do I really need now? If I, if I feel like, okay, it's time for me and my daughter. Can I, I want to just love this and open once and I love you, we'll, we'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> and then I'll just fully be in the cycle with playing skip ball or Uno with Prabha and that just felt so good, that full permission and allowance to be in just one cycle because I zoom out and I remember what's, what's important for me. Mm. And of course that's having my daughter time, having feeling that I have given all that I can to my work um, and uh, yeah, checking that it when in my body feels good, I don't have to do or to meet or to talk to anyone. <laughs> I don't, yeah, just like Wulan said, you don't have to go and talk to that person. If it's resolved here and it's okay, mm -hmm. if there comes a need the next day to, to talk to them, I will honor that. But for now, if it's closed, it's closed and I'll send my love and kindness. Yeah to the event, to the person. So yeah, loving that. Thank you very much, yeah. Annette. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing. You've really embraced it. I love how you've actually taken it to the next dimension. You've turned the cycles, the circles into spheres, <laughs> balls. Uh, so they've got a, a great uh, wholesomeness about them. And uh, yeah, that's uh, understanding the cost of every commitment that we make, of having to keep the commitment and realizing the the uh, the flow on effect and how even a simple email can trigger a whole bunch of necessary responses that turns it into a separate project. We don't even realize we're doing it to ourselves. So just becoming more conscious of what each, each time we say yes, what the real cost of that is um, and how that can affect us. So thank you for sharing that. Are you, that's uh, amazing how you've embraced that. Uh, are you ready for some, um, the energy of abundance, how about that? Yeah, because it's an abundant uh, space that we're in when we can say no. We're not coming from lack and wanting to desperately fill the void. All right, you ready? On the count of three, everyone, sending lots of energy to IU. One, two, three, and all the way to Bali, energy of abundance. <laughs> Let it rain down on you. Not literally there. <laughs> lots of warm energy. Are you feeling it, IU? All right, thank you. So uh, today is uh, what we're gonna look at today. So that was the assignment. Uh, and I think the, um, where, this, where we go with this, uh, and I've put this in my diary now to my calendar, and it's probably a good idea for everyone to do that, is just check in once a month. Just see how your to-do lists are going, uh, how you're going, uh, uh, anything that might not have made it to the list, just become aware of uh, what you might need to add to it. And I think, and what everyone here seems really good at is being very honest with yourselves and allowing those big things uh, that would normally be put aside because they're too hard, uh, confronting those. It seems like uh, everyone in this group is pretty good at that. Um, that's fantastic because resolving those, like Naomi was saying, the flow and effects, the empowering nature of that, then enables all the little things. Uh, suddenly they're not, you know, that you just do them. You don't even think about them because you're not so weighed down. So just, yeah, um, honoring yourself by just um, not treating this as a one-off thing, but something that you do on a regular basis uh, and life will start to become easier. All right, so let's just look at our progress so far. Uh, so we started with the law of exchange. Um, then we went into the law of the architect. 
So the law of the architect being all about the founder and the founder responsible for the vision and uh, whatever, whether it's a personal vision for your life or more to do with um, a program that you want to teach or a business or career or whatever, uh, we need to have that vision. And then the law of open cycles. So um, what I'd like to ask you, just to enter in the chat, um, of those three that we've studied so far, whoops, which one has been... Which one has been the most powerful one for you? Just uh, which has been the most powerful one of those of those three? There we go. The law of exchange, the law of the architect, and the law of open cycles. Which one have you has had the biggest impact on you? So, law of exchange. If you remember, there were four types of exchange. Uh, AJ's put down two, yeah. Uh, there was criminal exchange, partial, fair, and abundance exchange. Cheryl saying open cycles. Yeah, the law of the architect being all about creating the vision uh, as a founder. On oh, no, you, yeah, because you got to uh, see this one as a participant makes a difference. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I must say, I found yeah the uh, I found all of them to be powerful, but. Um, I love criminal exchange, actually. That's really left an impression on me. Well, I'm saying open cycles. Yeah. Uh, and if any of you saw in Myrna's, uh, Myrna's comment, she's keeping um, unusual hours at the moment. So she's working through the night. So uh, uh, I think most uh, times she's not able to join us. Uh, but she was saying that law of criminal exchange, it meant that she um, was paid by two uh, students who she wasn't going to charge money for and how much better that felt. Uh, she shared that in the chat. Um, okay, all right. So this next one feels like a natural segue from open cycles, which open cycles, when you think about it, as you close them, what we're doing is we're, we're reducing overwhelm and we're creating more space around ourselves. And that's the perfect place we want to be to fully embrace uh, this next uh, well, it's actually more of a principle that we're going to uh, be learning about. Before I, I go into what it is exactly, I just want to ask you and just uh, just put yes in the chat if this applies to you. Uh, Joy, who would like more of it? When we boil everything down and we think, what is life all about ultimately? Um, yeah, Cheryl Wood. Uh, this feeling of joy, and sometimes it's even hard to know what that means if we haven't been in the space of joy for a long, long time. Yeah, Amanda Jane, yeah, 100 times yes. Uh, but, uh, you know, going back to, that's why I have that rather low res um, pic there of um, a, a baby, but it was the, the most um, joyful picture I could see of just being in that moment. Uh, yeah, so, so this is what we're looking for, really, because... What more can we want really from life when you think about it? It's not really more money. You know, if we go behind more money, what's, what's that about? It's not the feeling of holding, you know, cash in our hand. That doesn't give us joy. Ultimately, I feel this is, this is where we all want to go, to feel this joy. Um, and we're very good at denying ourselves joy. I think that's the issue. So today is all about how do we veer away from our natural tendency to want to just put our heads down and I'm talking about myself too primarily putting our heads down denying ourselves joy how do we veer back to this state which is actually our natural state so uh, today's session is dedicated to the principle of present now that's not a typo that's actually what it's called it's not the principle of presence and it's not the principle of the present that's just called the principle of present so let's see what uh, that's about. Um, so there are three awareness positions. Now, when I talk about uh, uh, an awareness position, I'm talking about time frames. So uh, our three time frames: past, present, and future. Three awareness positions. So we can hold our awareness uh, in any one of those places: in the past, in the present or in the future. So where do most people 
spend their time. Let me, I, actually, I'll redirect this to you. Where do you spend most of your time? Do you seem to spend it most in the, or what you might like to do, this might be even more useful, is to just put a percentage, just put uh, past, present, future and the percentage of that you think you, your head uh, spends uh, most of its time in, or how much, uh, what percentage of time do you spend in each of those states? Thinking about the past might be regretting decisions that you've made or ruminating, uh, wishing you might've done something differently. Um, then the present where you really are present just in this moment, just aligned with the here and now. Or the future uh, might be uh, worrying about the future, a future event, uh, you know, putting a program together, thinking, oh, will I get enough people turning up, that kind of thing. Um, just put down in the chat how you feel you are currently dividing up your time. And there's no right or wrong answer. Yeah. Okay, AJ, that's uh, okay. 20% in the past, 20 in the future, and about 60 in the present. Excellent. No right or wrong answer. And of course, we're just kind of guesstimating here, but I just want you to start becoming aware of uh, these three possibilities, if you like. And just as a clue, for most people, uh, the level in the past and future is much higher than what AJ's put there. So just putting in the chat where you think how, you, how yours divides up roughly. Yeah, so, so Cheryl's more past, uh, full to the past. And uh, we'll learn more about the future. Yeah, Naomi's about uh, split. Actually, no, that's interesting what you put there, Naomi. All right. So just thinking about that, and then they have actually done studies on this uh, to see where most people are at. And actually, yeah, Naomi, you're pretty much uh, right there. So past 40%, future 40%, and then the present about 20%. Yeah. Yeah, and I, you're very, very focused on the present. Um, and, that, and part of that, apart from you, because, you, you know, this is uh, very much in alignment with your work too, there might be a bit of a cultural aspect to that too, because I noticed, uh, you know, when I'm in Bali dealing with the uh, Balinese, uh, their reference of time is very different from, say, our Western one. You know, ours is kind of linear and, uh, and the Balinese is much more focused on the present. But anyway, so this is kind of like an average breakdown of about 40% in the past, 40% in the future, and about 20% in the present. So, um, and when I say future here, 40%, it's not necessarily about uh, planning the future and envis envisaging the future. It's more um, about worrying about the future. Uh, you know, uh, will so-and-so be okay? Uh, will my child get into college? Uh, Will my partner leave me? These are all kind of common obsessions that people have. Uh, ruminating in the past, uh, going over and over and over why things turned out the way or if they could have turned out differently, you know, playing sliding doors with ourselves. What if, what if? I know I did that to a huge degree in 2008 with the global financial crisis. And, um, and if you're not careful, you can actually drive yourself a little bit mad doing that as well. Um, so that's the that's kind of the, like the the average split. But what's interesting with that twenty percent of in being in the the present, even that's not being fully present for most people. So twelve percent of that might be on trivia, like um, oh, I uh, I wonder if I should get the chicken out now to thaw for dinner, um, you know, or oh, I better put the garbage out in a moment, you know. So that's kind of being present in the now, but it's still focused on. Uh, doing. So if you really want to boil this down to how much time are we spending in our most powerful state where we're really connected with, uh, you know, what we're meant to be doing and also really focusing on where we want our life to go and really using our brain to its full capacity, it's probably only around 8%, which is great when you think about it, because, you know, you've got this far uh, maybe with maybe it's more than eight percent, you know. But with a with uh, only applying a little bit of your potential thinking power. So imagine just how far you go if you got really serious about using your brain uh, as much as you could. 
and uh, I know I haven't used my brain nearly enough and I, I, I have a tendency just to charge at things and do them and learn later. Um, so this has been a really powerful lesson for me personally and I hope it's, uh, it's resonating with you as well. So how have we already addressed this? And um, this is just a question for the group because it's quite interesting. I, I've always been aware that we tend to spend most of our time uh, inadvertently, either in the past or the future. And that was one of the things that, that was one of the reasons um, I've, I've always been passionate about my um, process, uh, Pain to Passion, which everyone in this room has done. And so let's just revisit that because this is a common journey for everyone that you've all taken. And it was designed really in order to understand our core destructive belief, we had to, uh, go on a very, very specific path. And that path was deliberately going into your past and becoming aware of all the things that might have been open cycles in your past, you know, things that hadn't been resolved that kind of felt like an unhealed wound, going there. And we had a, a specific goal in mind to get to that level where this information was stored, which, in other words, not readily available in the unconscious drawer. You know, you've got three drawers conscious subconscious and then unconscious so unconscious being this is the information that's almost kept in a safe you know it's impossible to access so we had to go there with the specific goal of identifying your core fear your core destructive belief and your overcompensating positive belief so understanding those aspects of you um, and we went to the past to do that and then in this process, of course, we went to the future. So you started to identify your core needs. Now, what happens when you set a goal or an intention that's not coming from your thinking mind, but actually coming from your soul, like from your, the yearning of your soul? Um, it's going to be something, uh, in my experience, that's not fear-based. It's going to be coming from love, essentially. So when we start to create uh, a vision of our life that's not fear-based. It's not, oh, I need more money because I might run out. It's not that type of goal. It's more like coming from, you know, something that uh, you know your soul yearns for, whatever that is. Uh, it's going to help allay any fears about the future. And we're bringing that into consciousness. So this is where we start to open up to our core truth, the, the truth of who we are uh, and the messages that come from that. And then when we bring the past and the future together, of course, we come to the present, we become present. So, and when we're present, that's when we can achieve our core needs. So to an extent, everyone in this room has already done this work. You've already been on this path, but that's not to say that just being present then happens like that. What it says is that you've done a lot of work that most people haven't done. Um, and so that's why so many people stay in that past, uh, ruminating, uh, you know, if only I, you know, made all these different decisions. And, uh, and this, when, whether we're in the past or uh, being anxious about the future, either one of those positions will rob us of joy. So the way to bring joy back into our life is to make peace with our past. And that's where the open cycles come in, you know, so if there are any open cycles there that feel like, you know, unhealed wounds, uh, then it, it is uh, in your interest to address those. And then in the future, uh, to have some kind of plan for the future, we'll get into that in a second, but also to get to a, a point where whatever happens in the outside world, you will be okay. So if we can start to develop that mindset, this is when it's much, much easier for us to become present and access joy, doing things that actually give us joy. It might be hard to imagine if you're not in that uh, space at the moment, but do know that this is where we're aiming to be. This is our destination. So just enter in the chat, just MS for make sense, if that makes sense so far. Just describing that pathway of, uh, of yeah, making peace with our past, understanding that the future will sort itself out. Yeah, good, excellent. Um, that really it's up to us. Uh, it's within our power, actually, 
to be present. And I'm not talking about being a monk on a mountaintop meditating. I'm not talking about that. Uh, meditation is a, is a great tool, but it's not necessarily the only way. I think we do the most powerful is to first make uh, peace with our past and to have a sense of what our future holds. So, you know, uh, Cheryl's talking about that in terms of uh, is, is photography going to play a part? And so it, that feels like an open cycle. And when you have resolution over that, Cheryl, probably, you know, future uh, uh, thoughts will be, um, you know, or worries or fears will tend to be allayed. So it's within our power to be present. But what does being present actually mean? Just enter in the chat how you would define being present or what you've noticed for yourself. How does that feel like? To be present what is that how would you if if no if you were talking to someone who'd never been present how would you describe that to them there's no right or wrong answer here by the way how would you describe being present or how have you experienced it you might think of a time when you were doing something and you were so engaged in it you didn't really notice you know the clock ticking you looked up and you went oh an hour's gone by I, I didn't even notice the time had gone there might be something that you do that engages you Amanda being fully in the moment and focused without any inner dialogue or chatter yeah that's right so where you that's exactly right so the mind isn't trying to haul you back into the past or the future yeah well, I'm being clear, bright, focused on the moment. Time goes by without notice, no distractions. Yeah. Remember when we were kids and we, we could play for hours with probably nothing? I used to spend hours playing fiddlesticks, you know, where you have to pull the stick out and so that the others don't move. But imagine how present and focused you have to be to do that. And I think, yeah, are you mentally clear, emotionally open, connected to my body? Yeah, that's a great that's a great. Uh, uh, comment yeah staying connected to your body because uh, we tend to otherwise live in our heads um, the past and the future tend to be a mental space so that's absolutely right getting that connection to your body is a great way of being present feeling your physical presence uh, here connected to the ground and connected to above yes so um, as children we automatically knew what gave us joy and we gravitated towards something that we could focus on and it's some kind of game or, but it usually was, I remember, you know, playing with little beetles, having a beetle cemetery, you know, these little things I would play with and they'd take, you know, they'd occup occupy me for hours. And then for some reason as adults, we veer away from that. It's like, we don't have time for that anymore. Or we think it's trivial, but uh, these are the things that actually give us joy. So, so here's one definition. Um, it's, I'm not saying this is the right one. Everything you've said so far is right. Uh, when your intentions, so what you're intending, uh, so in other words, you're in, intending to be here, your visions all focused here and your perception, what you're getting from someone else are all aligned in the here and now, okay? Um, have, you ever, have you ever been in a conversation with someone um, like in a, at a party, for instance, or at a restaurant, and every time someone else enters the room, they look over your shoulder and away from you. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> um, so that tends to happen a lot. Or when, uh, uh, you know, again, we might be in a restaurant situation, and someone pulls out their phone. So um, the next question is, why must we make being, uh, yeah, it's, it's so disturbing, isn't it? And it makes it hard for us to be present when, when we're with someone else like that. So, so why must we make being present an ongoing practice, a way of being? What are some of the benefits of being present? Just to enter those in the chat. What have you noticed um, within yourself when you're, when you're present? Uh, how does that positively affect you? How does it affect you emotionally? How does it affect you mentally when you're able to be really engaged? And this, there are no uh, right or wrong answers. Uh, Cheryl, much calmer, connected to yourself and surroundings. Yeah, so it affects your overall uh, sense of being, that you're, um, yeah, that anxiety tends to go away. Yeah, AJ, connected to your goals. Yeah, emotionally stable in each moment. Yeah, more at peace. Yeah, 
They only in a flow. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, better relationships. Yeah, totally. Yeah, you're so much more with that present with that person. No dragging open cycles in the flow. Yeah, no distraction from unresolved things exactly. Are you operating from full awareness and a place of choice? Yeah. Yeah, you, you start to become more conscious of what your real choices are rather than just being uh, reactive to other people. So um, here are just some uh, benefits just to make sure we cover off anything uh, that hasn't already been addressed. Yeah, so better concentration and focus. Uh, so that applies to any kind of learning situation. Uh, even listening to me, you know, there might be distractions uh, going on all the time. Uh, so just uh, really staying connected to this. Better execution and attention to detail. Yeah. Um, so anyone here who's not detail oriented, yeah, you know what it can cost <laughs> to not have attention to detail. So whether it's sending an email or whatever, just to be really focused on that, not be not have a thousand things going on in your head at once. Better listening skills and memory. Yeah, and identifying what's truly important. Uh, that's probably the number one thing I think here. And then working smarter. Yeah, understanding, able to make decisions. Um, yeah, like I use saying from, from a place of full awareness rather than just madly doing, 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 because that's kind of how we programmed ourselves. So to go, actually, that's not okay to be constantly doing. Let's step back because there might be things that are draining me of joy uh, that I could delegate to others. So, uh, yeah, but it's hard, isn't it? I mean, if it was that easy, we'd all be doing it. So let's just look, let's reflect on these different situations and just see how good you are at being present uh, currently. So. Thinking about uh, having a conversation, and you can just put yes or no in the chat, just, um, just to uh, remember maybe the last time you had a conversation, did you notice that you might not have been listening to the person talking to you, you know, you were just waiting for the lull in the conversation so you could say what you wanted to say? Um, I, would, I, would say I would put yes for that. <laughs> I find myself doing that. Um, all right, AJ, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right, AJ, not checking 100 things in the moment and priorities. Um, yeah, being a little in your mind or jumping in to talk. Yes. So just notice that next time you're in a conversation, are you uh, listening? Or maybe sometimes, and I, I say this to Ralph quite a lot because he loves uh, describing to me the mechanics of things. Like he's always looking at how things can be done better. And then he'll describe how you could actually do it better. And I used to just pretend to listen. I used to go, hmm, hmm, like that. And then my mind would be off somewhere else. And now I just say, look, you have to know, I'm going to start tuning out now because I can't keep up with you. So sometimes it's a matter of just being honest with the other person and saying, look, you're, you're going to start losing me at this point. So, um, yeah. So uh, if, you, if you relate to that uh, and uh, yeah, it's with a friend or a partner, it might be good to let them know that they are losing you and then they can bring it back. And this, he does the same thing to me. He says, oh, if you talk to me about this program one more time, Janet, I go, yeah, yeah sorry, sorry. So sometimes we can get a little bit, you know, we can be lacking in presence when we're not aware of what the other person needs. What about uh, another situation like... Um, playing with kids. Have you ever noticed uh, that, you know, that you might lose your patience uh, or, you know, start looking at your watch or pulling out your iPhone or uh, feeling that you, that you should be somewhere else? Has anyone ever felt like that? Um, I know when I was really tied to my desk, I was uh, often, I, I used to resent it as much as I didn't enjoy my work. I also resented people taking me away from my desk. So uh, sometimes I found it difficult uh, just to be in the moment uh, with my children. Uh, that was sometimes a real stress for me. Uh, what other times? Yeah, interacting with your partner or friends. Um, 
how how easy or hard is it just hanging out and not feeling you have to do something you know I'm very itinerary driven have to always be doing things so uh I'm, I'm uh, going to be spending a week with uh, three of my oldest school friends next week and I'm really curious to see how I go <laughs> not doing anything um what about yeah obtaining wealth influence or making money how much do we distract ourselves from that uh you know have we have any of us actually really sat down and and really mapped out um how can we what what is it that we need if we need to generate income from our work what is it that we need to do how do we obtain if we need influence how do we obtain influence you know this is where we really need to confront the things that are most important um, you know, so that we are coming from a position of power. You know, Naomi, you've got your program out there. You know, being present is really understanding the power of that program to generate income for you and going, okay, what do I need to do there? All right. So has anyone heard of the uh, Pareto principle? I'd say probably you have. It's uh, basically the 80, also known as the 80-20 principle. So applied to this, the principle of present, 20% of the things we focus on generate 80% of our business or our income, and 80% of the things we focus on only generate 20%. Uh, so what do we have to do? What is that telling us? So we have to identify the 20% of actions that will move the needle the most and give you 80% of your revenue. So thinking about that, just put in the chat, what are some of the things that you know you need to do that are going to impact you positively, financially going forward? Uh, because these might be the things that have uh, fallen off the radar. So just enter in the chat, if there's anything, what, what would, what would make up that 20% that you know would have the greatest leveraging effect in terms of affecting you positively? Could it be uh, putting a program together? Could it be, um, you know, uh, boosting your influence or your profile in some way? Could it be, uh, you know, it might be one of the open cycles. Cheryl, it might be for you just getting clarity on whether it's about around photography or something else. Are you, what do you think you, you would need to do? What, what's the 20% that could really make the biggest difference to your revenue? Is it getting greater profile on social media um, or creating some kind of, you know, marketing funnel or reaching out to more people? Are you making connections? Yeah, exactly. Uh, also asking for referrals. Honestly, most of my business is via referral. Um, and But sometimes we have to ask for the referral. So if I'm talking to someone who I've helped, I now say, oh, look, if there's anyone else you know that you might want to refer to me, please do, you know? So uh, that's a great way to get business. In fact, uh, at some point, I think that could be, uh, you could be getting, um, uh, even 50% of your business from referrals. So yeah, looking at what you can do right now that's really going to impact your income, that's not just tinkering around the edges, what could that be? We're going to go into this in a, a little bit uh, deeper as the assignment. So what we're, where we're really going to with this is only allow significant things to rent space in your head, start to think of it that way. Remove the clutter. And so open cycles was a big step towards that, taking that clutter out and allowing the space now for this amazing uh, organ that you have. This is your power center. This is your hard drive to actually do what it was uh, created to do, which is to get you what you actually want. So this, uh, this quote is from a fellow who is very, very, very successful. Um, and he said his greatest gift was his ability to have tunnel, tunnel vision. So um, here's how he explained how he works. So basically, uh, if he's talking about being in the future, 
uh, he's only thinking about the future at certain times, kind of sporadically. So, for instance, if he says, I'm, when I'm setting a goal, so it might be a goal for the next three months or the next year, or it might be five years or three years, whatever that time frame is, he will zoom out to a broad perspective. So he'll go, okay, this is where I want my life to be. This is where I want to be living. This is what I want to be doing. Uh, you know, and this is uh, what I want to be earning. You know, all these things starting to look at this as the as the big goal going forward because we have to do that because if we don't do it we're <laughs> we're not going to get it it's it all starts with the imagination it all starts with being able to imagine it first and say this is it you know um, putting a vision board together or writing it down what is that future how can you see yourself where you go yes that's a joyful life and i'm feeling good i'm feeling you know, I, I've got my reason to get out of bed. Life is good. This is definitely the best part of my life. What does that look like for you? <laughs> Zooming out. Yes. And then when you've zoomed out, when you've got that picture of what you want your life to be, so you've been able to get that broad perspective, then set the strategy. Okay, how am I going to get that? What are the action steps? So creating a pathway. So you're building a bridge between that vision that's in the future and uh, where you are now, your present situation, building that bridge. That's the strategy. And then with that strategy, those action steps in place, then you zoom into the present. And this is pretty much where you stay because the present is where you will get things done. Your open cycles have been closed. And now you're just on track. But I'm not talking about being present as just meditating and clearing your mind. This is being present and focused on taking action, doing things uh, that you enjoy, and maybe things that you wouldn't say are, thing, are your favorite things, but because they fit into the context of a broader picture, a broader path for your life, you'll happily do them because they're going to progress you forward along that path. And stay, stay in the present. So what this fellow says is my best chance of changing my future is to stay in the present, taking the right actions in the present moment. So being present, we're not talking about sitting down and staring at a candle. We're talking about taking action, but in the, with a mindset of being present, not a mindset of being anxious and worried about the future. So we take uh, ill, ill thought out action. Uh, but but action that is very focused and very strategic about getting us to a place. So final words, your mind is the most powerful tool you have. So, so many people don't use it the right way, but you do have a choice. So the choice is to be the master of your mind, not its slave. And this, by doing this, is what will bring you the greatest joy. So it is taking action, but taking action in something that engages you in the present. All right. So um, I'm going to suggest some actions to follow on from this. And then we'll have a bit of a discussion, a bit of a chat about it. Um, so here's what I'm suggesting is the best uh, way forward with this whole uh, principle of present. So let's say you set a goal for the next three months. Where would you like to be in three months' time? So we make it a, because um, uh, sometimes it's hard to go beyond a year or five years. Right now, I think three months is probably a good time frame. If you prefer to make it another time frame, that's fine. This is just what I'm suggesting. If you'd rather make it a year out, then uh, by all means. So identifying where you would like to be within a certain time frame, then create the steps that you need to achieve it. And everyone here has done the PERT process. You can do that with your uh, post-it notes, putting them up on the wall, reverse engineering. And then really uh, starting at the beginning of those steps, just focusing in the present on achieving each one of those. Uh, and you might not be able to stay present every moment of every day, but it's a muscle that, that you build. So really just uh, 
because you know this is taking to you to a place, a good place, it's much easier to do these with as a great act of intent, you know, positive intention. All right, and then yeah, repeat this uh, uh, when you when you reach the end of this three months, repeat it the next three months or whatever your particular time frame is. But this is basically how we uh, ease the uh, our inclination to go into the past and stay in the past and and get wallow, wallowing in the past and also minimize anxiety about the future is to just start taking control now and say, where would I like to be within this particular time frame? How am I going to get there? And what do I need to focus on today? So this always brings you back to the present. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I'm just going to open it up to the room now. Put it on gallery view. And how are we for time? Oh, we've got a bit of time. Yeah. So let's just uh, talk about this and we'll just go back to our uh, original order just in terms of where you, what you think you could do, what kind of goal could you set uh, that you'd like, what is the one thing that you would like to achieve going forward? And I'll, I'm not, I don't know, Amanda, Jane, are you with us? There you are. So actually what we might do, we've got time. Why don't we do a visualization? Let's do that together. We'll do a visualization on, uh, we're, we're gonna feel our way into this goal. And uh, let's see what comes up. So everyone getting nice and comfortable and closing your eyes. And just feel your feet on the ground, spine nice and straight, just to stay more alert, more present. I'm gonna take some uh, deep breaths in, three deep breaths in on the count of three, one, two, three, and deep breath in and let it go. And another deep breath in and let it go. And last one, deep breath in and let it go. And letting go of any distraction, just bringing all your focused attention inwards into yourself right now and into that part of your body that uh, loves receiving warm energy the most. It might be your stomach or your heart, your chest area or your throat or your head or wherever that is, just bringing this energy into this place. And feeling this energy, this golden energy, landing in this, in this part of your system that needs it the most in your body. And like a river of gold, feeling this river, finding its way through every nook and cranny in your body, filling every pore, every cell, like a river, making its way down the bottom of your body, past your hips and your legs, down to your feet and out your toes. And equally, this beautiful river of golden light energy working its way up, up to your shoulders. Feel it running down your arms, down your hands, at your fingertips. And all this energy also flowing upwards through your head, at the top of your head. And as you feel this energy filling your system, you realize that not only is it entirely within you, in, in every part of you, filling you, filling with this, you with a sense of wholeness, of groundedness, of peace. Realizing this is actually your natural state. This is how you're supposed to be in this state of lightness. Just being at one with yourself. And you realize it's this energy that's also not just within you, but it's without you. It's flowing out outside of you. It's connecting you with the outside world, with the environment, connecting you with the universe. There's really no separation at all. You and the universe are one. And just being in this place, this delicious place. And as you're in this beautiful place, this peaceful place, 
go to a point in your life where you've been most alive and picture yourself in that place where you're most alive. Where you come to life and noticing where you're at, what you're doing and who you're with. And this feeling of being alive, this joy, this is really our goal. This is really where we want to go. So what could we be doing? What could we bring into our life to bring more of this joy, to make this joy more unnatural, a more common, a more common occurrence, something that we experience on a regular basis, not just every now and then? What do we need to do? What's, what's something that we could set on our horizon line to achieve? What's something that would help bring more of this joy into our life? What does that look like? How can you do more of what you do to bring this joy into your life? What's the thing that you would like to see in your future that you have some control over, that you can create, that would build a bridge between where you're at now and where you can be feeling more joy in your life? What's that thing that you would like to manifest? What is it that would make you feel good about yourself? Maybe it's something that's been out there that you've, that's been out there before that you've thought about, but maybe it was too hard or seemed impossible. But if you got this one thing or did this action or achieved this, you know it would be a major step forward for you. It's just a matter of deciding that that's what you want. So just allow that to come into your field of vision. And taking another deep breath in, deep breath in. And let it go. And when you're ready, slowly opening your eyes. Okay, uh, Ayu, let's go to you first. What came up for you as something that would you'd really like to bring into your orbit that you could aim for? Mm. I'm, uh, yeah, moving when you led me through. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the things that uh, I like doing, it's everything with dancing and nature and people. And, uh, and then towards the end, uh, it's what I want creating. Um, I want to create a home for me and Prabha. So really want to focus the next three months on on what are the things that I can do uh, to bring my visual, uh, visualized uh, income so that I can step more into my dream of having my own home here. Mm. So home so is the, the goal. Yeah. yeah. And then the income yeah. is what will allow you to get the, yeah. So, so home's like the North Star and then it's really about your work, isn't it? how to really put that out there to derive an income, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Can you work out the steps, the strategy to get you to that place? Do you think you have that within you to do that? Yeah, I think I'll sit and create a list and see, yeah. Mm what yeah what are what are all the options that are available and then seeing uh the low what are the 20 percent things that i can do that mm -hmm. uh can bring me the 80 percent yeah uh outcome exactly because you've got you got yeah. well from what i've experienced i started doing i use workshop uh or program last week and it was fantastic uh, really a really good way of going deep into your body very much um, a follow-up of my work really uh, it's a really good complement uh, to the fifth door work and um, I think you just have to get it out there are you you have to make more people you have to know who your audience is none of these things are going mm. to be clear until you actually put yourself out there and take action make mistakes and do all of that you know so um, yeah but, yeah, um, I've started to, sorry. No, keep going. Yeah, I've started to uh, really map out and uh, yeah, seeing where, like, how do I get my previous clients? How do they come? Where, where are they like, profiling and keeping the database? Yeah. So this, my intention this year is for process and structure. So um, yeah, keeping database and, and analyzing and so then, yeah, uh, when I move forward, then yeah, I can get clarity where, where I need more to go. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if I'm making connections, which are places that's most effective for me when I'm uh, telling my programs to people. Excellent, all right. So yeah, so, so setting the goal, that's creating the home and then the steps that will get you there uh, that bring you back to the present, so yeah. Very good. Okay, thanks okay. for that, Ayu. Uh, okay, Cheryl, over to you. I didn't um, get very far with the visioning. I'm tired, so I just kept mm -hmm. trying not to fall asleep. But all right, um, I did. I did sort of think that you know a three month goal could possibly be to work further on trying to. Um, you know, it's like, I can't, I can't make it happen, but I can figure out steps to, to try and get more clarity and spend more time, um, meditating, journaling and tapping into those times when I, you know, cause I, it's feeling like it's just now bubbling at the surface. So I think I do need to spend some time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Excellent. Thanks, Cheryl. Uh, Amanda Jane, over to you. Hi, everybody. So, yeah, for me is dance, connection, you know, connect and, and get out a little bit more. I, I took one day off this week and went to the beach and connected with an old friend, which was really great, laughed and just, you know, it was a bit free because I've really just been pushing it and, and wearing a few different hats. Set up my office and my room in Batu Belong, Changu, correctly and um, really unpack and feel at home there and stay there for maybe six months until I, 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 I get my next home and get settled. Um, I like to be settled and go to a few more networking events and uh, yeah, reach out to um, past clients and, and do a bit of a MailChimp and, and uh, yeah, follow up and see if I can, you know, generate some new leads and make my decision uh, which way I'm going to go. Because I believe it has to be 100% one way. I think every time I've done that, I turn things to gold. The yeah. coaching and the yoga and the mentoring and the NLP will always be there. But, you know, just what is my motivation to be unstoppable right in this moment? Yeah. And the secret to, you know, create um, abundance and wealth. Exactly, Amanda Jane. And I think... Uh, we're, we're really, we're still talking about something that's unresolved, like a red pill, blue pill thing, like you've got mm -hmm. and Cheryl's got, uh, is an open cycle. So really the open cycles are the segue into being present, I believe. Otherwise it's always gonna be pulling at us one way or the other. So uh, yeah, it's really, the goal could almost be like taking your biggest open cycle and solving that, uh, coming to resolution with that. 
Yeah, I want to resolve this over the weekend because it's yeah. really, I'm having an inner conflict with self and soul and I can feel it. Yeah. And, yeah, it, it's something that next week or before I, I want to have this resolved and, um, mm-hmm. you know, then I can just live without any, you know, head clutter and, and just be limitless and, and open and free and in my joy because it exactly. takes away that joy because my head's yeah. going... Brrr, Yep. <laughs> the head is the joy free zone. <laughs> yeah. All all the joy resides from the neck down. So that's where we have to um get to get out of our head. Yeah. Uh, uh thanks thanks, Amanda Jane. We'll learn over Thank to you. you. Uh I think everybody's pretty much nailed it already. Um I guess it's really just working on those um open cycles that are just a, a major distraction and um uh, bringing it back to the present and being present mm, yeah and uh, I mean you know with with my future I, I've got research to do and all those kinds of things but then I can put them in place um, I feel a little bit still scattered at the moment so I'm just trying mm-hmm. to bring everything back and using open cycles as a way to do that and I love what I you said and what you said I'm going to make them all into these shiny little balls and put them in this beautiful basket (laughs) so that they feel cared for that's right and and that way I don't feel guilt about it (laughs) and then bring them back and appreciate them and and do the real work in that moment because I can be present then so yeah that's right. Yeah, that was a lovely thing to share. Are you? Yeah, don't let them become spiky balls. You know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Can I say it. something? I actually like like coming back and seeing like oh, there's this ball. So it's just not complete, not round yet, but like ah, uh, you're beautiful. I love it. <laughs> and some are like various shapes and not not completely like I adore you I love you give me reasons tomorrow <laughs> it's just, yeah. I guess that uh, me accepting that like I'm human I'm not perfect and that's okay too I'm totally loving myself unconditionally in that in my not being able to tackle everything because I'm not God <laughs> and just so yeah I can relax and be home in this as well. But like I make everything beautiful. I put it there and I love them. I'm telling them I'm not going anywhere. I, I know you're there and I love you. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, all of this I think comes back to our uh, residual emotions that we're carrying around. And if we're carrying around a lot of guilt and shame, which, um, you know, we all do. It doesn't matter how conscious of it we become. There's still, it's still there in varying degrees. Um, so it's really starting to just learn that we don't have to feel, or we're not, we weren't put on this planet to feel guilt and shame. Actually, joy is our natural state. So just to become aware of that and pull ourselves up and go, you know, all oh, right, now I'm worrying about something. Why am I even doing that, you know? learning to become conscious about how we're responding to events and and I think what will happen is that'll highlight just how many people out there are stressed and anxious so it might throw us into places where the environment doesn't seem to match with how we're feeling inside but again we just have to understand that and deal with that we're going to see more stress and anxiety out there I think coming coming up so we just have to not as much as we can allow that to take us off our course you know and understand it's normal for people to respond that way but that doesn't have to be us uh all right so uh let's uh oh yeah we might as well finish now um just enter in the chat uh how you're feeling right now um that would be good to just uh share with me or actually let's go around the room it's only a small room we've got time um are you starting with you just in a couple of words how are you feeling right now Mm. Um, inspired, empowered, hopeful for all of us. I think for me, most importantly, is like when you mentioned something about shame and, 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 and guilt, I was processing this morning, I was doing journaling with, with my phone otter. So going again, because I'm also journaling in the spiral <laughs> as I lead uh, everyone in the spiral, we are in the level of shame and guilt. And I was like, I'm inviting more abundance to create that I can have my own home. And then the shame and guilt is something that, you know, inherited, maybe generational. It's not, 
Yeah. And when I connect to shame, it is because something wrong with me. I am a woman. And then, so I don't deserve, I, I was not given money. And then my brother was given 500, I was given 50. So he has big fat piggy bank. <laughs> um, and I was angry and I, I was jealous. And then I just wanted my instant noodle. So I stole it from him and felt like I'm so guilty, but I'm enjoying this pleasure. I actually didn't know. But soon enough, it, it, it felt lighter. And then he got angry. He destroyed the whole house. I was hiding there. <laughs> and, but I was so guilty. And then, yeah, I did meditation. And so I visited that, that girl, froze the time and said, you're okay, I'm here 30 years later. I'm from your 30 years later. I want to have a conversation with you. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I know that, you know, you're feeling, you're feeling some, you're confused. You're feeling something was wrong with you. But yeah, I just had a conversation with her and like realizing like what we're doing, what I'm doing with her now is releasing generation, what, you know, and what she thought because she was confused, right? You don't know why you don't deserve, you don't know why you got stuck. And I'm just feeling so empowered. Because do we then with shame and guilt, if we decide to break this open cycle now, it is us then finishing the story right here, right now. <laughs> freeing ourselves so that we can be in the present. We are not gripped by the past. And then I'm so much joyful and hopeful for all of us here who just want more clarity and more truth. And uh, yeah, looking at shame, looking at guilt and releasing or being in the present. And uh, yeah, may the cycles guide us and may the vision of what we want to create and having clarity of the actions that we want to take here right now and always zooming in, zooming out when it gets too much and we get confused and zooming in, we want, we want to take action constantly, checking with ourselves, being in the present. Mm -hmm. Why am I here? What am I doing? Okay, like when you don't know like, oh, I'm so crazy, overwhelmed, what the fuck am I doing? Like, okay, then zoom out. <laughs> Where yeah. do we want to go? <laughs> Why are we are here for? So yeah, empowered. Hopeful. <laughs> you, yeah, I, I love how you've recognized too that there's generational emotional residue. Uh, and yeah, we always assume everything's our fault. That's our natural go to. And uh, yeah, we might have just inherited something. So everyone in this room, if you're being a disruptor, if you're breaking that that crazy loop, uh, also know that that has an enormous positive ripple effect on everyone around you. And, you know, so I, I, I think we're all feeling that shift in humanity at the moment. It feels like this is a time of enormous change. So, um, uh, and we have to. Thanks, Ayu. What about you, Cheryl? What would you like to share before we close? How you're feeling or anything that's been an insight for you? Or the, how you're not feeling? <laughs> well, I'm, I, I mean, honestly, I'm a little bit um, not feeling because I'm tired, but I'm, uh, the, the information was good, and I think I'm going to go back over it again tomorrow and listen to the um, audio when you post it um, over the weekend, because I think there's some really good material here. I'm, I'm glad I participated, because at first I thought I was going to check out and, and not join tonight, but I'm glad I did, because it's always helpful to hear the information firsthand and participate. Mm. So, but, yeah, so I apologize. I'm, I'm you know, kind of 70% here. <laughs> No, I really appreciate you um, uh, being here, Cheryl, because I know what it's like when you're tired. I'm hopeless at night. I, I just crash, and I know how hard that is too. But, um, yeah, I think you'll get from these laws that there's a sense of continuum and flow and connectivity between them. So we are actually going on a particular path that's been very thought yeah. out. So, um, yeah, the, the wisdom should just keep increasing. And all I would say is just to really uh, take as much action as, as you can to really bring it home, you know, to, yeah. to make these a part of you so that they become, because th this knowing is already, you know it already, it's already there. Uh, it's just a matter of bringing it to the surface through action. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're gonna need yeah. all of this in buckets, I think, going forward. You know, the more resilience we can build right now, the better off we're gonna be, uh, come what may. So thank you for being here, Cheryl. Um, thank you. All right, uh, Amanda Jane, over to you. Final words. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> I relate. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a day person. I like to sleep at night. So I feel, I feel freer, a lot more clarity. I feel, um, 
Uh, and, you know, I, it was full moon, so I had some severe dreams last night. I'm, I'm not talking to my mum and sister, so there was a lot of guilt and shame around that. But I left home at 13 and there's a lot of stuff unresolved with my mother that I, I've done therapy for 20-something years and, and I'm no longer going to keep continuing to try and reach and, and follow and, and love that. But I just, I said to my friend yesterday, if I didn't leave home at 13 and my mum gave me everything, I wouldn't be who I am today. And I'm very resilient. I'm very independent. You know, I want my future lover. I want love and I'm dedicated. I'm very disciplined. And I have a lot of her too and a lot of dad. So, but yeah, there was a lot of feelings, but um, I don't have to take that on and live in the past or live in that little girl. I'm 50 and I was still begging for her love by 48 and 49. And I've just had to step back and um, give it to God and, yeah, and make my decision with my future um, career because, you know, I know I can do anything and make it happen. I just got to mm -hmm. believe in myself and, and make a decision. Mm -hmm. and uh, move forward yeah so I feel empowered and a lot of clarity and thank you and the open cycles and um today was uh really liberating yeah well today was really about uh when you close those cycles this is what this is where you come to this mm. state of uh just being able to focus without that constantly being pulled away and by that sense of overwhelm and it's an ongoing practice obviously it doesn't just happen like that but it's good to know where this is leading um thank you amanda jane well Anne, how about you how what what would you like to close with um i'm don't know um honestly i think it, it's all good um these each week is is another way for me to see, get more clarity about myself and where i'm going and what i'm doing and to open cycles is great because it stops me from procrastinating so much um yeah yeah and it just I, I feel a little I feel a bit clearer um you know I know that around me everything is in flux and so I'm learning how to be a part of that a little bit more instead of being stubborn um for the wrong reasons <laughs> you know <laughs> um yeah. so uh, ultimately I'm feeling really good well, and I know you've got big things going on and big balls of uncertainty on top of every all the uncertainty that's out there. So you know you've always got this this group, and you can always get in touch with us by WhatsApp, and we're always here. And um, that's great. Yeah. I really <laughs> love my Fridays. Yeah, no, I, I enjoy them too. So uh, so next Friday, uh, I'll be joining you from Yamba actually, which is a beachside. Um, uh, location in Australia, which will be nice. Um, and uh, yeah, for the fifth law. So um, all that all will be revealed uh, next Friday. So till then, have a great week. And uh, yeah, stay well. See you, Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. See everyone. Good to spend the time with hey, you. Hey, Janet, can you Bye. stay on the line? Oh, yeah.